Hey everybody, Varun here from Language Academy. Guys, welcome back to one of the finest, one of the best videos I've ever produced. In this video, what I'm going to do is I am going to share all my experience having taught more than 10,000 students in the last three years and have taken the exam more than five um, times, scored a perfect 90 every time. I am going to share each and every tip, each and every trick, and each and every strategy for each and every task which you need to have before you go for the exam so that you can clear the exam in the very first go. Now, what we'll be doing over here is I'll be explaining each and every task with the marking criteria, with the strategy, with the template and things you need to be careful about. I request all of you to make sure you take the notes so that you don't have to watch the video again and again and you can focus on studies. Let's get into the video. I don't really want to waste a lot of time because this is going to be a long, lengthy video. So I want to give you as much value as I can in the shortest period of time. I'll be sharing my screen and if you do have any doubts, let me know in the comment section. Let's get into the video. The PT full course in just one video, we are going to start. Remember this thing, this is for beginners as well. What is PT? English test, as all of you know, valid for study visa or your work visa purposes as well. Um, the four modules, speaking, writing, reading, and listening, the 20 different types of tasks. And then there is integrated scoring means speaking is not independent or writing is not independent or reading is not independent speaking is going to give you points in reading reading is going to give you points in writing writing is going to give you points in reading listening is going to give you points in writing so everything is interconnected that is very important thing you need to understand because if you don't understand you'll be focusing on the wrong areas i'll be telling you with each and every task that which task is concerned with which area so that it's very easy for you. Um, at the time I'm making this video, we are in October 2021, but from 16th of November 2021, the exam will be two hours long. It's at the moment, it's around two and a half, three hours long, and there will be no break from 16th of November as well. At the moment, we have an optional 10 minutes break, but it will not be there from 16th of November 2021. All right. Remember this thing, this is 120% a computerized exam. There will be no person who will be taking your exam. So you need to perform everything in front of the computer and the system or the algorithm of the, or the computer is going to evaluate you. There is no human involvement as well. So it's very important that we place a microphone properly because if there's a human, human will put an effort to understand what you're saying. But if it's not clear for the computer what you're saying, computer is not going to put any effort to understand. If it's not clear, you're going to lose points. So when you go and sit for the test, They'll give you an option to record your voice and then play it back to see there is no disturbance. Make sure you place your microphone somewhere here only, um, somewhere in between your face and chin, or you can keep it parallel to your mouth, but don't keep it in front of the mouth or too close to the mouth. If you'll do so, a lot of air is going to go into your microphone that will um, create disturbance. If you're not sure, if you think the voice is not clear, ask for help. That's very important. Keep yourself comfortable before you go for the test. Make sure you drink water, you go to the washroom, you should be 100% comfortable. Along with that, you'll be given erasable notepad and a few markers, probably two markers. If they don't give you two markers, ask for extra marker. One thing which you need to be very careful about, the marker dries out very soon. So if you keep it open, if you don't put the cap back on, it is going to dry out and you are going to struggle. So make sure whenever you have the marker and you're not using it, you place the lid on the marker. So these are a few things and make sure you focus as well before you start. Now, as soon as you start the very first thing, the very first module is your speaking, then we have got your writing, then reading, and then at the last listen. As soon as you start, the very first thing Pearson is going to ask you is for your personal introduction. Remember this thing, this is not evaluated. This is not a part of your exam, but this is just to get you started, just so that you can get into the flow. You'll get 25 seconds to prepare, and then you'll have one minute to speak about yourself. It doesn't really matter what you speak over here. It doesn't really matter what you speak over here. You can speak anything. You don't have to go exact one minute. You are given one minute. You can speak around 30 seconds, 40 seconds, 20 seconds as well. So speak anything about yourself in a minute. If I go for the exam, what I'll do is, hi, my name is Varun. I'm a PT tutor and I've been training students from last three years. I'm taking this exam for my permanent residency purposes and I am fully prepared to take this exam. 
So that's what I'll do. That will help me to get into the flow and I'll get myself comfortable with the exam. As soon as you move on from your personal introduction, you will get started with PT speaking module. Now there are minor changes here. This one is from 16th of November. At the moment we have around six questions here and three questions here. So no major changes, but from 16th of November, 2021 will have this format. You'll have five different task type in speaking. Read aloud, you'll have six to seven questions. Repeat sentence, 10 to 12 questions. Describe image, three to four questions. Read a lecture, one to two questions. And answer short questions, five to six. Let's have a look um, in depth, task by task, what you are expected to do in read aloud, what you are expected to do in repeat sentence. First task is read aloud, which you're going to have five to six. Remember this thing. Now, this is very important task. What happens over here? You will be given a text on your screen. You will be given text on your screen. And as soon as you have the text, you'll have 35 seconds to prepare. After those 35 seconds, you'll have around 35 seconds to read aloud, 35 to 40 seconds to read this text as it is. For example, many papers you write in college will require you to include quotes from one or more sources. Even if you don't have to do it, integrating a few quotes into your writing can add life and persuasiveness to your arguments. The key is to use quotes to support a point you're trying to make rather than just include them to fill space. So this is your task. You'll be given a text on your screen with 35 seconds to prepare. After 35 seconds, you'll have a beep sound. Remember this thing in read aloud, you'll have a beep sound, which means your microphone has opened up or has started and you'll have to read the text aloud. You'll have six to seven, five, sometimes five, but mostly six to seven read alouds. This task is important because it contributes to your speaking module and your reading module as well. Very important. Why reading? Because you'll have to speak, but at the same time, you'll have to read as well. So your reading is evaluated as well. This is assessed on three parameters. There are three parameters on which your speaking tasks are evaluated. Fluency, your pronunciation, and your content. Fluency means your flow. That are there any pauses? Are there any hesitations? If there are any hesitations, any pauses, any corrections, you're going to lose points in fluency. Pronunciation means clarity. It doesn't really mean your accent, remember this thing. It doesn't really matter if you have Indian accent, African accent, or any accent. You just need to speak clearly. Pearson recognizes all the accents. And content means whether you are reading what's on the screen. So let's say if there's 60 words, for example, and you're only losing, uh, only reading 50 words, you're going to lose points in content. In case you do not read this part, you're going to lose points in content. So fluency means your flow. To get full points in fluency, you need to make sure you go in a smooth flow. Fluency is not about going fast. This is one problem students make. Go in a smooth flow, avoid hesitations and self-corrections. Pronunciation means your clarity, not your accent. Content, do not omit words, do not add words. Focus on S and ED sound at the end of the words. How do you read the numbers, contractions, and years? Now, for example, we've got don't here. Anything on your screen, you have to read as it is. You have to say don't only. You will, know, you will not say do not. Don't will be don't. Can't will be can't. Shouldn't will be shouldn't. Numbers, let's say we've got 1881, for example. So you can say 1881 as well, but the right way of saying it is 1881. So you have to always pronounce such terms in the standard pattern. The standard pattern is 1881. I was born in 1996. I'll not say I was born in 1996. So you have to speak it in a standard way and contraction as it is. I'll still give you an example of what speed you have to go at. Many papers you write in college will require you to include quotes from one or more sources. Even if you don't have to do it, Integrating a few quotes into your writing can add life and persuasiveness to your arguments. The key is to use quotes to support a point you are trying to make rather than just include them to fill space. So I took a few pauses, but after the phrase, for example, many papers you write in college will require you to include quotes from one or more sources. Slight pause. Even if you don't have to do it, you can take a slight pause here. Integrating a few quotes into your writing can add life and persuasiveness to your arguments. The key is to use quotes to support a point you're trying. I'm not saying you are, I'm saying you are. Point you're trying to make rather than just include them to fill space. So that is what you need to do in read aloud.
not that difficult but important task because this is going to give you a lot of points in reading if you find reading section hard or speaking hard make sure you work over here this is going to boost your reading significantly now next task is your repeat sentence again important task so read aloud you'll have five to six and after that you'll move on to repeat sentence what happens over here you'll get a sentence you will hear a sentence that can be anywhere between 9 to 16 words long as soon as the audio stops after half a second your recording will start and you'll have to repeat the sentence in exactly the same way as you hear it you'll have 10 to 12 of these this is important why because this contributes to your speaking and your listening as well important task remember this thing this is assessed, assessed on three parameters as well now for example the blue line ends here means your audio finished your recording will start and you'll need to repeat the same sentence. For example, your sentence is, I am a good boy because I finish all my work at time, your own time. So you'll have to repeat the same sentence in exactly the same manner. Five points for fluency, five for pronunciation and five for content. Fluency again means speaking in a smooth flow, not going too fast, not going too slow and avoiding any kind of hesitations and self-corrections. Pronunciation is more about speaking clearly, not your accent. Content. Content means you need to repeat 100% of the content. How content is marked in PT. Remember this thing in repeat sentences. If you repeat 100% sentence in the right way or in the correct sequence, you'll get 3 on 3. If you repeat more than 50 but less than 100, you'll still get 2 on 3. If you repeat more than 25 but less than 50, you're going to get one by three so what i'll recommend you see it will not be practically possible it will not be practically possible for you to repeat 100 percent of the sentence in each and every case in that case what you need to do is you need to make sure you continue you do not stop repeat as much as you can but repeat it clearly and confidently because let's say this is a sentence i'm going to london with my friends um, to attend a birthday party now i only remember london and friends i have one option I am going to London and by the time you're thinking your recording is going to go, you'll run out of time. You won't be able to give out your answer. You lose points in fluency, you lose points in content, plus you lose points in pronunciation. But if you say something this, I'm going to London with my friends and I'm very happy. Now what happened here? You don't have 100% of content, but you are fluent. You're going to get full points for fluency. You're clear. You're going to get full points for your pronunciation. And you're going to get two points on three in your content. As a result, you're getting 12 on 30. So I'll highly recommend try to repeat as much as content you can. In case you're not able to repeat it, do not stop. Make something by yourself and repeat as much as possible so that you don't lose points in fluency and pronunciation. So that's what you need to do in your repeat sentence. Let's have a look at a few more things. Yes, do not stop. Even if you're not sure, just repeat as much as you can, but that should be fluent and clear. Use the initial strategy or memorize. What's the initial strategy? Let's say the sentence is, I'm going to London with my friends. While the audio is going on, just write, I am going to London with my friends. So I A G T L W M F. I am going to London with my friends. So if you are comfortable, you can write initial for each word in the sentence, but most of the students are not because the sentence is quite fast. In that case, close your eyes, understand the meaning of the sentence. It's very important that you understand the meaning of the sentence. If you do, you will be able to recall most of it and will be able to repeat it in a fluent manner. That's what you need to do. You need to make sure you practice 30, 35 repeat sentences every day very important task extremely important remember this thing all right um see it might be possible or it can be a case that you're not able to get 100 percent what repeat sentences are you can practice on languageacademy.com.au um it's free to practice there you'll get a better idea next task is describe image what happens over here you'll be given an image on your screen that can be a pie chart a bar graph a table a line graph any xyz image You'll have 25 seconds to think or prepare about the image. And after 25 seconds, your microphone will open up and you'll have to describe the image for 40 seconds. So 25 seconds to prepare and then 40 seconds to speak about this image. You can have image which can be a line graph, a pie chart, any random picture. 
you'll have 25 seconds and 45, 40 seconds to speak. You'll have three to four of these from 16th of November, 2021. This is an important task, not the most important. It only contributes towards your speaking. This is assessed on three parameters again, fluency, pronunciation, and your content. Fluency means flow, pronunciation means clarity, and content means speaking a few keywords from here. Now I'll give you one hint or one trick over here. See, there's no human involvement. Everything is going to be assessed by the computer. And for describe image, task like describe image, there cannot be one fixed answer. Let's say I've asked thousands of students to explain this image. Each and every student, even if they're explaining it in the right manner, there are chances that not even two of them will have the same answer. Everyone will have a different way of explaining the image. That's why there is no fixed answer in the system. What is the system going to look for? System is just going to look for keywords from the image. In describe image, please do not focus on the accuracy of the image. What you need to focus on, you need to focus on speaking clearly, fluently, and repeating a few keywords from the image. I've got a template which has helped thousands of students to get their desired score. I've tried that in my test as well. I've got 97 times in speaking um, while experimenting a few things. So I highly suggest, recommend all of you to follow that template. I'll show it to you, practice using that and 100% that is going to boost your score. Yes, templates do work in PT. I know it can sound a bit weird, that yes, how can this be this easy? But yes, it is if you follow it the right way. Alrighty. So as I've told you, uh, fluency, pronunciation, and content. Smooth flow, no hesitations and corrections. Clarity. The accuracy of content is not important. There is no right or wrong answer. Remember, a computer evaluates you and there cannot be a fixed answer. Do not stop. Speak anywhere between 20 to 30 seconds. I don't really want you to go exact 40 seconds. You can speak anywhere between 20 to 30 seconds, satisfy the requirements, satisfy fluency, how you'll do that, speaking fluently, no hesitations, satisfy pronunciation, speak clearly, content, speak a few keywords from the image. Don't try to cover everything. Even if you're explaining this image accurately, you cannot explain everything in 40 seconds. So Pearson is not expecting you to cover each and everything. Pearson is expecting you to speak a few keywords in a clear and fluent manner. Use this template. The given image gives information about title. It is a very beautiful image and I have to speak for 40 seconds for this image. The different elements in the image, which are one, two, three, I can also see four, five, six. You can add another sentence here. I can see seven, eight, nine. Now seven, eight, nine, one, two, three are keywords, right? I'll, I'll just show you in a second how I explain it. One of the element is maximum. The other one is minimum. To conclude, the image is very informative. The image gives information about timetable. It is a very beautiful image and I have to speak for 40 seconds about this image. There are different elements in the image, which are 9, 10, and 11. I can see statistics, lecture, and psychology. I can see Monday, semester one, and tutorial. One of the element is maximum. The other one is minimum. To conclude, the image is very informative. I understand that it might sound weird, but it works in the exam. I have tried. You can try it on the official Pearson mock test. That is exactly the same way your actual exam is evaluated you can try it on language academy's portal you will get a good idea and hold over this task this task is very easy not very important do not make a single mistake over here you would make sure that you follow the template and do it the right way very easy task speak around 20 seconds a few keywords from the image if there's any word in the image you're not sure about skip it because if you'll speak it and you'll speak it incorrectly you're going to lose points in pronunciation and you're not going to get anything extra in your content because computer is not recognizing what you're trying to say. So make sure you don't mess this up. Speak around 20 to 30 seconds and you are done. You can get 90 if you speak 35 seconds as well. But why I'm telling you to speak 20 to 30 seconds so that you are on a safe side. And if you will try to go exact 40 seconds or 35 seconds, you'll speak more and the chances that you'll have four mistakes. So that is something I really need you to work on and be careful about. All right, let's get back. So that was our describe image, three to four of these from 20th, um, 16th of November. All right, let me show you how I'll do this. Instead of saying the whole thing, I'll just say, the given image gives information about management team. It is a very beautiful image and I have to speak for 40 seconds about this image. There are different elements in the image, which are director, assistant to director and manager. I can see Michelle, Chris, and Smith. 
one of the element is maximum, the other one is minimum to conclude the images were informative. Now, I'm not sure how to pronounce this word. I'm not sure how to pronounce this word. I'll just say Smith, right? Even if you describe it accurately, you can say Mr. Smith or Miss Smith or Smith is the customer relation manager. So this is a keyword as well. So be very careful, play smart, don't work hard. That is something I really need you to work on. Next task is your retail lecture. What happens here, you'll have, sometimes you'll have a video, sometimes you'll have an image, sometimes you won't have anything, you'll just have an audio. You'll get an audio, you'll get a lecture, which will be any, which can be anywhere between 40 to 90 seconds long. After the lecture, you'll have 10 seconds to prepare. And after that, you'll have 40 seconds in which you'll have to retell the lecture in your own words. You'll have an audio or video lecture 40 to 90 seconds long. While the audio is going on, you'll need to take notes. While the audio is going on, you need to take down few keywords. I'll show you how to take notes. After the audio, you'll have 10 seconds to prepare. After that, you'll be given 40 seconds to retell the lecture. It will only contribute towards your speaking and listening modules. This task, retail lecture, is only going to contribute towards your speaking and listening module. Remember this thing. Because it contributes to your listening, this is an important task. Why listening? Because you have to first listen to a lecture and then retell it in your own words. You'll have one to two in the exam, and this is assessed on three parameters. Fluency, pronunciation, and your content. Fluency, pronunciation, and content, same. Fluency means flow, clarity, and content over here means keywords. In here as well, there is no fixed answer. Retail lecture as well, there are thousands of ways to retell the same lecture. So there's no fixed answer, but over here, content is important. When I say content, keywords are important. You need to make sure you have proper keywords so that computer knows you are speaking on the topic. To get full points, five on five in your content, speak around at least 15 keywords from the lecture. I'll show you how you have to take notes and what templates you need to use over here as well. So this is kind of um, a sample image or screen you'll have in your exam. You might have this image, you may not have this. If you do have, you can use these keywords as well. All right, I've already explained to you, accuracy is not important, but keywords or content is important. There's no right or wrong answer. Computer is going to evaluate you. You do not need to focus on the meaning, but focus on the keywords. Speak around 25 to 35 seconds, use the templates. Okay, one very thing, very, very, very important thing, right? One very important thing, grammar, reputation, vocabulary. Are these important in PT speaking? Remember this thing throughout your PT speaking grammar and repeating the same words. I'm not saying self-corrections, but repeating one keyword or vocabulary is not important. I've seen so many students trying to complicate describe image and retail lecture, trying to use very high acad academic words which they themselves are not really sure how to pronounce. Your grammar, your vocabulary, your um, accuracy is not really important when it comes to your PT speaking. What PT speaking is looking for, for your fluency, pronunciation, and content. There is no parameter which will evaluate your grammar or your vocabulary. What they're looking for, fluency, pronunciation, and your keywords. All right, let's have a look over here how you have to do your retail lecture. So we'll write down few keywords. This is how I always prefer taking down keywords. Break or divide your notebook into different parts. One, two, three, four, five, and write down one word or two words or a short phrase here. So these are all my keywords. This is the template you have to use. Topic was the main topic of the lecture. So we'll use one keyword here. He told about one, two, and three, one keyword, two keyword, three keyword. We told about four, five, six. He also told about seven, eight, nine. He also told about this. He also told about this. To conclude, the lecture was very informative. Now, you might be thinking you that told, 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 told. He, you are reading a lot of things. Remember, there is nothing called vocabulary. You don't really need to use fancy words. And there's nothing called reputation as well. They are just concerned with the keywords. India was the main topic of the lecture. He told about population rate of vaccination in government. He also told about sports and education. He told about, or he also told about Olympics participation rate and literacy rate. He also told about rate of examination winners and runner up. He also told about lockdown, COVID-19 exam cancellation. To conclude, the lecture is very informative. 
Now let's say the lecture is very short. Lecture is only 30 seconds, worst case. Or it's difficult, you're not able to write down everything. India was the, you, you have to still go 20 to 30 seconds at least, remember this thing. 35 is better. Because if you speak 35 seconds, you'll be able to speak a few more keywords and that will make sure you don't lose any points in content. India was the main topic of the lecture. He told about India population and rate of vaccination. He told about government sports and education. He told about Olympics participation rate and literacy rate. He told about India government and Olympics. He told about participation rate, sports and population. He told about rate of vaccination, education and literacy rate. To conclude, the lecture was very informative. That is all you need to do in your written lecture. Now I understand if you're taking the exam for the first time, whatever I'm telling you, might not sound logical or you might be thinking what is this guy talking about but this all is coming up from all the experience i've got all the tricks all the attempts i've taken just to try a few things playing with the computer trying to trick the computer and that's what i've come up from you might see a lot of other videos trying to ask you to focus on the message and all um see nothing strong nothing right you can follow either way but i want to make your journey as smooth and as easy as possible that's why I'm sharing all these easy tricks, which I normally give out in our VIP course. So that is something I wanted to do it. This 120% works. You can try it on language academy portal, languageacademy.com.au. And you can, before you go for the actual test, you can try this on your language academy portal. You just go on languageacademy.com.au, um, register there and practice and see your score. It's all free to practice. So that will hundred percent help you out. Now let's move on to the next and last task for your, for your speaking module. Very easy and not so important task. You'll have five to six of these answer short questions. You'll get one, two or three words, journal knowledge based questions. Um, not important. For example, you have something like this. What is the first paragraph of an essay? What are the mountains that can erupt? What are the people who study history? So journal knowledge based one word question. This contributes towards your speaking and listening. The marking is one point for correct answer, zero for incorrect answer. When the audio stops, you'll have to speak after a few seconds. Once the question is done, you'll get two, one to two seconds and then your recording will start. You'll have to give your response in a few words. You don't really need to make complete sentences. Just one to three words are fine. If not sure, now let's say I've, I've got this question. What do we call the thread in the center of the candle? I don't know what wick is. I have two options. One option is I say, I don't know. Second option is stay quiet. Third option is at least speak something. If you do this or do this, 100% you're going to get zero. If you do this, which I have tried, what I do is I repeat a few keywords from the question. Just say thread center of the candle. That sometimes work in the exam and students have even got a perfect 90 doing this. First of all, try to give the right answer. Sometimes you'll have questions with options. Mars or Pluto, which is the coldest planet. You don't know, just say Mars and Pluto. But if you don't have options, you don't know the answer, repeat a few keywords from the question that works in the exam. To prepare yourself, cover all the predictions we post on YouTube every month, twice a month we post it actually. Or you can cover the prediction from language academy portal as well a week before you come don't practice this one too much not that important right so that is where your speaking section ends pt speaking is the backbone of the exam if you do well in speaking you're going to boost your reading and listening read aloud focus on flow clarity and read each and every word clearly repeat sentence repeat as much as content possible but in case you're not able to repeat 100 percent Repeat as much as, but clearly and fluently. Third, describe image. Do not focus on accuracy. Focus on a few keywords. Use the template. Speak around 20 to 30 seconds. Read a lecture. Take the notes clearly. One mistake which I see a lot of students make is taking down a lot and then not able to read what they have written. So write clearly, take down keywords, and then use the template. Speak around 25 to 35 seconds. And finally, answer short questions. Give out the right answer. Not sure about the right answer. If there are options, repeat all the options. If there are no options, repeat a few keywords from the question, you are going to get your score. So that is where your speaking ends. And now we are going to move to your writing module.
All right, we'll move on to our writing part now. Remember this thing, majority of your writing score is not from the writing module, it's from your reading and listening module. As we saw in speaking, read aloud contributes towards your reading, your repeat sentences, read a lecture, answer short question, they contribute towards your listening. Similarly, there are tasks in reading and listening which contribute a lot towards your writing. A writing task or writing section by itself is very easy. What is challenging is your reading part, which impacts your writing a lot. So writing, I'll explain you, I'll give you the shortcuts, hacks and tricks, which you can use as it is to crack your exam. And then we'll move on to reading and listening. Let's get into the video. Writing tricks are going to amaze you, shock you, surprise you. But whatever I'm giving, I'm giving you to the best of my knowledge and I'll make sure whatever information you have, it works and it will do wonders if you follow it properly. Let's get into the video. So remember this thing, PT writing in the writing module, there, there are two different types of tasks. Very first one is your summarize written text. And the second one is essay. What happens here? You'll get a passage on your screen. This is something like this. It's quite a long, lengthy passage. You can have anywhere between hundred words to 300 words. What you need to do is you'll have 10 minutes in those 10 minutes. You have to read the passage and write the summary of the passage between five to 75 words, but that summary should be only one sentence. You have to just write in one sentence. One sentence means only one full stop, right? So you'll have a passage or text on your screen up to 300 words long. You'll have to read and summarize the passage within 10 minutes. You need to write the summary in one sentence means only one full stop, no question mark, no exclamations and between five to 75 words. This task will contribute in writing obviously, but along with that, it will contribute in reading because first of all, you have to read this whole thing and then write. You'll have one or two of these in your exam. Some students will have one, some of you will have two, but 95% will have two in the exam. This is assessed on four parameters, content, form, grammar and spellings and vocabulary. Content, what does content means? Content means that whatever main idea is there in the passage or uh, the main idea, main content of the passage should be there in your answer. How do you demonstrate that again? There is no fixed answer because each and every student is going to have a different answer for same passage. How is computer going to look for the ideas using your keywords? There's no accurate information here as well. You need to have proper keywords, keywords, for content, to get full points in content, you need to have around seven keywords. When I say keywords, keywords means nouns, proper words which do make some sense. For example, over here we have got public figures, sports stars, personal privacy, films, music, TV, character, leading politicians, officials, businesses, celebrities. So these are all keywords, film stars, musicians. So we need to make sure we have at least seven keywords from the passage in our answer to get full points in content. Form means you need to make sure you only write between five to 75 words. And on top of that, there should be only one sentence means only one full stop. If you write more than one full stop, or if you have a question mark, or if you have an exclamation, you're going to get zero in form. And remember this thing, if you get zero in form, there will be no further marking means you'll automatically, automatically get zero over here. So you need to make sure you don't mess this up, write around 50, 60 words um, and make sure there's only one full stop. No full stop in the middle or anywhere between and the first word should be capitalized and the last you have to have a full stop. Grammar and spellings, two points. You get two on two if there are no grammar or spelling errors. You get one on two if there's one grammar or spelling error and you get zero on two if there are more than one grammar or spelling errors. Vocabulary, you get two points for this as well. You don't really need to stress much about this. What you need to take care of vocabulary, use academic words, use formal words, and don't use any kind of contractions. That's all you need to do in order to get full points in vocabulary. Now, how do you do this? Remember this thing in summarize the text, you'll have the timer here. There's no rollover time. No rollover time means even if you finish this in six minutes, you'll not have extra four minutes in the next one. So it's always better to use full 10 minutes. First one minute, read the passage one to two minutes, then next five to six minutes, write your summary and then two minutes to proofread. 
proof reading is very very important if you don't proofread you're going to 100% have a few spelling errors and you're going to mess this up remember this thing you can only have one full stop not stops one full stop exclamation or question mark you can't have one full stop and one question mark because question mark exclamation and full stop they are represent end of a sentence so only one full stop or a question mark or an exclamation you have to write between 5 to 75 words you are not expected to cover everything remember this thing it's not possible to write 400 words in 3 in 30 40 50 words this is the main idea you just need to satisfy the marking criteria that's your job means once you submit your answer computer is going to evaluate your answer against the marking criteria it is going to look for seven keywords full points in content form 5 to 75 words only one to one, one sentence full points no grammar errors, full points here, and no contractions, full points here. You can use exactly the same words or phrases or even sentences from the passage. There are two methods of doing this task. Method one is the ethical meth method, I'll say, and method two is the hack, which works, has worked for thousands of students. You can check out all the success stories on you, this YouTube channel or on our Facebook page as well. What is the first method? Read the passage, get the idea of what the passage is, and based on the idea, frame a sentence for yourself. So you read the whole thing, try to understand what the passage is talking about, and then write a sentence based on this passage. But it's practically difficult. It's you can do it, but it's difficult. Easy ways: select three to four sentences, important sentences. When I say important, means the one with more keywords. You can select three or four sentences and join them using connectors. You can use and furthermore, more, more, and then change one or two words. I'll show you what I've done. If this was our passage. Most of the times, first sentence will be important because it has got all the main keywords and it will introduce the topic. So I wrote public figures include politician, this is, this is, this, from here till here. End of the sentence, comma, and Another sentence, people have their own right to make informed judgments about the kind of leaders they have. That's it from here till here. Another sentence, comma, furthermore, comma. Many celebrities actively seek media exposure in order to grow their careers, revealing to the media in many aspects of their personal lives. That's all. Now, if I'll try to add another sentence, I'll go more than 75 words. So you can just write 65 words. After that, what you can do is you can change a few words, one or two words, and you are done. That's all you need to do. Very easy task, not very high scoring, but at the same time, if you follow the trick, you are fine. See computer, there's no fixed answer. Computer is not having any fixed answer. Computer is having a set of keywords. You need to ad address or satisfy the marking criteria. What you're going to do is, Look for a few keywords, write those down, and you need to make sure you satisfy the marking criteria. Six to seven keywords, then you have to make sure you write one sentence between five to 75 words, no grammar or spelling errors, and no contractions. Change a few words, and you are done. That's all. Play smart, don't work hard. That will be a summarized written text. That is your first task of your writing module and then we'll move on to your essays. Let's get into the video. Let's see what we have got here in essay. Essay is difficult if you follow it the right way, but easy if you follow the shortcut. You'll find a lot of shortcuts. I'm trying to give you whatever I can, the best I can. PT writing, task two, writing essay. You'll have an essay topic on your screen. You'll have an essay topic on your screen. You'll be given 20 minutes and you have to write an essay 200 to 300 words long. You'll type here, you'll have your word counter here. You'll have an essay prompt on your screen. You'll have to write 200 to 300 words in 20 minutes, not 20 minutes, 20 minutes. This task will only contribute towards your writing module. Summarize written text contributes, contributes towards your reading and writing. This will only contribute towards your writing. You'll have one or two essays in your test, and this task is evaluated on seven parameters. There is no fixed answer, but seven parameters. Content means you have relevant keywords and relevant information. Keywords are important here. 
relevant keywords to the topic. For example, if they're talking about internet, you need to have social media, Google, search engines, marketing, job, so keywords related to the main topic. Form means you need to write between 200 to 300 words. If you write less than 200, more than 300, you are going to lose points here. If you write less than 120 words or more than 380 words, what will happen? You are going to get zero in form and there will be no further marking. This will not be evaluated. So you need to make sure you write between 200 to 300 words, ideally around 250 words. It's not that if you write more, you'll get more points. It's more about the accuracy. Quantity is not important. Quality is important. Grammar, what do we mean by grammar? Grammar means whatever answer you have got, there shouldn't be any kind of grammatical error. Whatever you have written should be 100% accurate. If you have one error, you're going to get one on two. If you have more than one, you're going to get zero on two. How to avoid grammar mistakes? If you're not sure about a sentence, don't write it. Write a simple sentence. Spelling again, similarly, one spelling error, one by two, more than one, zero by two. You need to be very careful about one thing that you don't mix UK and US spellings. UK spelling are something which we use in subcontinent, subcontinent. UK, for example, we write organize with S. Here we write Z. Here we have color C O L O U R. Here we have C O L O R. So you need to be very careful with spelling. Vocabulary, make sure only academic words, academic words, avoid contractions, and then use synonyms wherever possible. Development structure and coherence means your idea should go in a flow. There should be a link between each paragraph. How do you do that? You use a lot of phrases. The template I'm going to give you will help you satisfy this and this as well. Linguistic range means having academic words, strong words, a few fancy words, which we are going to cover in the template. Now, what you need to cover or take care in essay before I give you the template. You're expected to write between 200 to 300 words. You can write anywhere between 250 to 270 words. If your typing speed is not that good, write around 200 to 20 words. You can have agree, disagree essay, problem solution essay, discussion essay. 30 seconds to read the prompt. 15 seconds, 15 minutes actually, 15 minutes I'll say not 17 to write and then two, three minutes to proof it. This is the most important part. Yeah, this is fine. Writing is good, but proofreading is superstar. Means if you mess up here, these 15 or 17 minutes are going to be worthless. Remember this thing. Focus should be on writing perfectly but not writing the perfect ideas when i say writing perfectly there shouldn't be any spelling and grammar errors and you should write the template properly you'll need a few ideas not too many satisfy the marking criteria and play smart very important we play smart we use the template now let's have a look at the template first this is language that means proven as a template Topic has become an integral part of the rising debate in the present world. So whatever our topic will be. While proponents of the argument are in favor, however, the opponents are completely against the relevance of the topic. In my opinion, X, Y, Z has more positive impacts than negative. To commence with, there are, there are a number of arguments in favor of my belief. The most prominent one is that the one Positive. Let's say I'm saying, in my opinion, mobile phone has more positive impacts than negatives. Here I'll write one positive of mobile phone. Is that the mobile phone phones allow us to communicate, to um, watch videos, help us in entertainment, any anything? Then we'll give an example. According to the research conducted by Western Sydney University, more than 90% of the students are in favor of mobile phones. Secondly, another advantage. Then we'll move on to the other side. On the other hand, critics may point out that one of the most significant disadvantages of mobile phones is that they, there is a lot of potentially dangerous material which can harm the mindset of young adults or young children. Or you can say um, of mobile phone is that it can cause severe threat to personal information. For instance, a survey conducted in the United States reveals that more than 20% of the mobile phones were hacked and 
financial information was stolen in the last two years. Something like this. Make up an example by yourself. To conclude, even when there are a lot of demerits associated with the topic, with mobile phones, the advantages outweigh the disadvantages, and mobile phone has become a crucial part of our life. Therefore, efficient use of mobile phone should be promoted. However, it's you should be condemned. Now, you can use the same template even if you have two essays. Remember this thing. Each task in PT is evaluated separately. So Pearson is not going to look that yes, he has used this template. How is he, he using the same template here? So you can use it. And there's nothing called plagiarism when it comes to PT. Remember this thing, right? Let me give you a sample answer. With the increased traffic in the cities, the use of public transport is increasing day by day. So we have one keyword here, traffic in the cities, another keyword, advantages of public transport. Use of public transport or using public transport or simply public transport has become an integral part of the rising debate in the present world. While the proponents of the argument are in favor, however, the opponents are completely against the relevance of public transport. In my opinion, public transport has more positive impacts than negative around the world. If you don't want to repeat it, you can write public transport such as bus and cars. That way, you'll add a few more keywords related to the topic. To commence with, there are a number of arguments in favor of my belief. The most prominent one is that public transport, such as bus and train. See, I'm trying to make it relevant. I'm trying to add a few keywords because whenever we talk about public transport, we also talk about bus, train, cars, ferries, and all. Okay, first advantage is the most prominent one is that public transport, such as bus and train, are cheaper and convenient to travel. That's it. One advantage and then example for the same. According to the research conducted by Western Sydney University, that's my university, more than 70% of the users were in favor of the benefits provided by public transport. So that's it. I'm saying cheap and convenient. And according to research, more than 70% people agreed that yes, there are a lot of benefits. Secondly, another advantage, public transport reduces the harmful gas emissions and is safe to travel. That's it. So gas emissions go down and safety is higher. Now we'll talk about negatives here. On the other hand, critics may point out, point out that one of the most significant disadvantages of using public transport is that it is overcrowded and unhygienic. So negative is overcrowded and not clean, which can result in a number of serious consequences. For instance, a survey conducted in the United States reveals that 90% of the commuters complained regarding high waiting time and uncomfortable experience. Or you can say regarding the cleanliness comma high waiting time and uncomfortable experience that's it we are done to conclude you can give another reason here but because i'm saying advantages are more that's why i told about two advantages and one disadvantage to conclude even when there are a lot of demerits associated with the use of public transport the advantages outweigh the disadvantages and it has become a crucial part of our life therefore efficient use of trains and buses should be promoted However, it's excessive and misuse should be condemned. And that is it. We are done with essay. Sounds easy. Yes, it's easy if you follow it the right way. If you play smart, it's difficult if you try to go too logical. Follow the templates and summarize written text and your essay. You are going to boost your writing. But remember this thing. Your summarized written text and your essay are not the only two areas from where you're going to get your points in writing. Writing is primarily from your reading and listening module. Yes, summarized written text and essay will contribute around 20% or 30% of your writing scores. The rest, 60 to 70% of your writing score are going, to from, are going to come from your listening and reading part. So we have to make sure we focus on reading and listening as well. So this is where we'll finish off our writing part and we'll move on to our reading. But just to recap, summarize written text, take three to four sentences, join them using connectors, change a few words. If you don't want to do that, you can read the whole passage, understand the message, and then write a summary based on the understanding. But based on the understanding, what you need to do is you need to make sure you have around seven keywords, no grammar and spelling errors, and between five to 75 words, only one sentence. In essay, make sure you take one minute to read, half a minute to read, and then 15 minutes to write, two to three minutes at least to proof it so that you can make sure there are no spelling, no grammar errors. Because template by itself will not get you the score you need to use the template properly and make it work for yourself. You need to make sure that there are no grammar errors, no spelling errors. Plus on top of that, you are well aware of all the words and phrases in the template. If you do so, 100% you're going to boost your score. 
last tip in your essay make sure you include all the keywords given in the essay prompt in your answer that way computer knows that you are addressing all the things whatever you have been asked for so that is it now we'll move on to a reading module a slightly challenging module All right, reading is the third module of your test. You'll have total 13 to 18 questions. At the moment, we have around 20, 21 questions, but from 16th of November, 2021, we'll have 13 to 18 minutes and 29 to 30 minutes of overall time. Overall time means you won't have any um, time constraint per question, but you'll have an overall section time. So you'll have to manage your time as per the number of questions you have now what is the main thing over here time management we have five different types of tasks here reading and writing blanks mcq single answers reorder paragraphs mcq multiple answers reading blanks drag and drop reading and writing blanks you'll have five to six one to two two to three one to two and four to five now these two are not important the rest three are important let's have a look in detail about each and every task reading and writing blanks we also call them drop down blanks what happens here you'll have a passage on your screen few words in the passage are missing they're replaced by a blank and for each blank you have a drop down menu for each blank you have four options based on the context based on the grammar you have to select one option which will go over here similarly you'll have four options here four options here four options here you get five to six such passages each passage will give you points in reading and writing you get one point for each correct blank so one point here one here one here one here this passage will contribute four points in your reading and four in your writing so let's say we have got five passages like this you'll get 20 points in reading and 20 in writing so that's why this is very important task so as I've told you, you'll have a passage on your screen with four to five blanks, each blank with four options. This task will contribute towards your reading and writing module. You need to focus on the context, means you need to understand what the passage is talking about, the grammar rules. Now, based on your grammar and your context, you need to eliminate. Let's say this is grammatically incorrect. This is incorrect according to context. You're left with two options based on the meaning or the reasoning given in the passage. You need to select one of these options. There are a few grammar rules which we'll, we'll use in reading blanks and reading writing blanks. So there's one more type of blanks which will come uh, in a while. Please make sure you pay attention to these. These are super duper important. Remember this thing. What is a noun? Noun is any particular place, object, chair, table, all these things. If there is a blank right after an article, what is an article? A, an, or the? There will always be a noun. For example, this is a dash. This is a noun. This is a pen. This is a table. This is a chair. Jared had a friend who helped him in the time of need. Any blank after a and the, you always have to use a noun. If there's a blank between article and noun, he is a dash. He is a dash boy. He is a good boy. So you'll always have adjective over here. Adjective is something which will modify the noun, which will give you more information about the noun. He is a dash boy. He's a bad boy. Steve played a dash role, a great role. Adjective. Steve played a great role in the success of his team. If there is a blank right after possessive pronouns, his, their, her, our, mine, your words like this, possessive pronouns used to refer to nouns. There will always be a noun. This is his car. We will use his car. After possessive pronoun, we have got a noun. If there is a blank between a possessive pronoun and a noun, so possessive pronoun, this is his dash car. We'll have adjective. This is his beautiful car. This is his new car so any blank between possessive pronoun and noun you have to use an adjective she admired your stellar performance your stellar performance your possessive pronoun we have 
adjective here. So any blank between possessive pronouns or an article as well and a noun will have adjective here. That's what we learned here. Possessive pronoun after that noun between article and noun adjective between possessive pronoun and noun adjective as well. If there is a blank right after helping verb, is, am, are, was, were. So these are helping verbs. He is a dash or he is dash, not a, a will be article. There will be either third form or continuous form of the verb. Helping verb will always go with ing or ed form. This he is playing, John is playing, is ing form. Active voice, you're more likely to use ing form. Passive voice, you're more likely to use ed form. With is, am, are, was, were in active form ing. He is writing a book. We were, this is passive. Passive and active, what's the difference? In active, you have the person first. In passive, you have the object first. And then subject afterwards. We were, we were not stranding, stranded in the mountains because of landslide. So helping verb after that, you'll use third or continuous form of the verb. If there's a blank right after the words be or been, there will be again third form or continuous form of the verb. They have been trying to solve ing form. You'll never say they have been tried to solve. They have been trying to solve the problem for two hours. The project will be completed, will be not complete, will be completed by next month. If there's a blank right after the word two, always first form. I'm here to play cricket. I'm here to represent my client, not to representing my client. Certain measures must be taken to rectify the situation, not to rectifying the situation. So these were a few grammatical rules you need to use. If you have these grammar rules in mind, and if you implement these while practicing and use the elimination strategy, plus understand the context properly, 100% you're going to have a high accuracy rate in your reading blanks. Now let's have a few more tips which you need to use in your reading blanks. All right, do not spend more than two minutes per passage. One passage, two minutes maximum. Remember this thing, once you click next, once you move on to the next question, you cannot come back. So you need to be very careful about this. Do not spend more than two minutes per passage. Understand the context. First of all, understand what the passage is talking about. Then use the rules and eliminate the options. Only one option you have to select. You don't have anything else to do. Now, let's say there are. this is the passage. This is one blank, second blank, third blank, fourth blank. You're confused about this. You're confused about this. Fill these ones first. What will happen as a result? You'll have a better understanding of the passage and the chances of these two being correct will go up as well. So fill the ones you're sure first and then the remaining ones. Do not leave anything unattempted. There's no negative marking. If you do it wrong, you'll get zero. If you leave it zero, so it's better at least you do it. This will contribute in both reading and writing. Why in writing? Because you use a bit of your grammar here. That's why. You need to practice these 20 every day. This is one of the tasks you will find slightly difficult, but this is super important, right? This is where you need to, I've given you tricks, templates for each and everything till now, but here you'll have to practice a bit. That is something which will make you better. Um, but I've given you grammar rules, which will obviously help you in each and everything. All right, so these were our reading and writing blanks, five to six of these. Next task, MCQ multiple answers, not so important. I always ask all my students not to worry too much about this. You'll have a passage, a text, a few images sometimes, a question, and five to seven options. Because these are multiple answers, more than one option is correct. If you have five options, you'll have either two or three correct. If you have six, two or three correct. If you have seven options, at least you'll have three correct and maximum four correct. But normally you'll have five, six options. In here we have got one, two, three, five, six, yes. So what you need to do here, you first of all, you don't, please don't read the whole thing. Read the question, identify the keywords, and then find the information here, compare the information with each option, and then select the one which is correct. Remember this thing, most of the time, correct answer will be paraphrased because they're checking your reading skills as well. 
Reading MCQ multiple answers, do not spend more than a minute per passage. This is not important. I don't want you to waste time here. Read the question, highlight the keywords, locate the information and compare the information. There's negative marking here. You get one point for each correct selection minus one for each incorrect selection. But minimum you can get is zero. Let's say you have selected two options, both are incorrect. You won't get minus two overall, you'll get zero. What I always recommend is if you find slightly difficult, always select one option. That way, because one option is easy to locate and at least you'll get one on two. If you'll try to be a bit greedy, you'll try to get more points. You may get two on two, but chances are you'll mess up the second option plus one, minus one, you'll end up getting zero and you'll waste your time as well. So select one, get something out of it and move on because even if you mess this up, you can get your desired score. You can get 79 plus as well. But if you uh, waste a lot of time here and you're not paying attention to what's coming um, after this, you're going to mess it up. This task only contributes in your reading. I'll show you how to solve it. Which of the following statements are correct? These statements, which of the following are correct? with reference to colors of the flag. So they're talking about what, which all um, statements are correct according to the colors of the flag. So we have got the significance of orange here, green here, and then white here. White representing the hope for peace with them. Where we have right, white, right? So we'll compare this with this. White represents the hope for equality. This say hope for equality, this say peace. Peace and equality are two different things. Yes, most of the answers are paraphrased, but peace, they can be peace when there's no equality as well. They can be equality when there's no peace as well. So you need to be very careful about synonyms, but meaning will not change. So this is incorrect. Green symbolizes many issues, but most importantly, it represents word and landscape. Green has something to do with word and landscape, but more importantly, symbolizes evolution. But this says, more importantly, it it represents landscape. This says revolution. Incorrect. The symbolism of the colors is as meaningful today as the time when it was designed. Where is time? We have time here, but this is only about orange. This is talking about all the colors. So in here, we'll only have information about orange. This is a journal passage. Time is here. It's three equal stripes illustrate the Irish political landscape as accurately today as in 1848 the year when the flag was first unfurled means when it was first brought um, forward. So means stripes are as accurate today as they were for the first time. This is correct. Prior to 1848, we don't have any information for that. But if I go for the exam, I got one answer, I'll move on. Orange is associated with Irish Protestants because of the victory of William III. The color orange is associated with Northern Irish Protestants because of the William of Orange. That's right. Almost fine. For deposed king. So this is fine. This is correct. This is correct. When viewed from left to right, viewed left, left is this actually, sorry. When we are viewing it from left to right, we have green, white, and orange. But this is orange, white, and green. This is incorrect. So these two will be correct options. But see, I've read this before, still it took me around a minute to solve it. That's why I always recommend select one option, which is easy and straightforward and move on. This is not important. You don't really need to practice these. Again, read this first, look at the information, compare the information, select the one which you find correct, select one and move on. It's better and safe. And remember, most options or correct options will be paraphrased. When I say paraphrased, it means meaning will be same, but words will be different. So we are on to task three. MCQ multiple was task two. Now we have got PT reading three order paragraphs. One of um, challenging tasks, I'll say slightly confusing as well. You'll have four, five, or six sentences here of a paragraph, and all of these are in jumbled order. Means the first sentence can be this, or it can be this. The second can be this. The third can be this. What you need to do is, you need to read all of these. You need to read all the passages and all the sentences actually. And based on the understanding of the context and using the rules, you need to arrange them here in the correct sequence.
So you'll have four to six sentences in jumbled order. You need to read the sentence, understand the context, and arrange in the correct sequence. You need to follow the rules, and that's it. Success is going to be yours. What you need to do is first of all, uh, let me explain you the marking criteria. Let's say your question is in this form: B, D, A, E, C, and the correct order is A, B, C, D. You don't get points for correct placement. You get one point for each correct pair. So, for example, you have placed it in such a way. C A D B E. Even though E is at the last, it is not making pair because you'll get one point for A B, one point for B C, one point for C D, and one point for D. So maximum four points. So maximum points are always one less than the total number of sentences. If you have got this A B is a pair, B D is not a pair, D C is not a pair. Even though C D is a pair, but D C is not a pair, and C is not a pair, only one point. A B is a pair. B is not a pair, E C is not a pair, C D is a pair, two points. And if you've got everything correct, four points. No negative marking. Minimum score is zero. You are only evaluated, or this is only evaluated based on your reading, and you'll only get points in reading. No negative marking, so you don't have to ever leave this task unattempted. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give you all the rules, all the strategies which you need to um, use. Whenever you do your reorder paragraphs, I have given this one in one of the videos before as well. But I'll request all of you to please write each and everything down so that whenever you solve reorder paragraphs, you know what you need to aim for, what is important, and what are the things you need to be careful about. Very important. Please note it down. I request all of you. All right. Let's have a look here. Strategy one. First thing, what you need to do is as soon as you get. Five, four, six, seven sentences, whatever it is on your screen, you need to find an independent sentence. Independent sentence will be the first sentence of your answer. A sentence which introduces a topic can stand out by itself and is not dependent on any other sentence for any kind of information. Independent sentence basically is a complete sentence. For example, if I say he is a good boy, you can't just say he is a good boy. Before that, you need to say who he is. You need to say, um, I have a friend. Named Varun. He is a good boy. So I have a friend named Varun. Can be a complete sentence, but this won't be a complete sentence because it is dependent on any other sentence. How do you identify an independent sentence? This will give you a journal idea and will introduce the topic. Journal idea means not too deep or not in depth information. It will mainly consist of and will introduce a person's name, any technical term. any book title any research any play situation or concept so it will mainly introduce you the nouns it will not depend on any other sentence or clause for any kind of information means it will be a complete piece of information for noun sentences starting with he she them those they are likely to not um, are not likely to be the first sentence or independent sentence because if you say he means you are referring to something you have mentioned earlier this sentence will normally not start with contradicting words or transition words like firstly secondly however therefore because these are used in accordance or in relation to something you have told before acronym rule is very important we often ignore it if you have got two sentences right one says un the other one says united nations so this is more likely to be the first sentence because you will always introduce full name first and then short forms dr michael clark and dr clark this has to be the first sentence if there is any acronym or short form the complete sentence sentence with the complete term will always come before and the sentence containing acronym will come afterwards if you are still not remember this thing if you are still not able to find out the independent sentence consider each sentence and see that can you use this sentence to start a conversation with a stranger that let's say these are five sentences and there is a person you don't know who this person is can you use these sentences to start your conversation with a stranger if yes yes that's your independent sentence so if you can use that sentence to start your conversation with any stranger a person you don't know that will be your first sentence all right before we move further we'll have a look at few other rules as well rule of articles very important we often ignore it we all know it subconsciously but we don't know how to use it practically there are two types of articles indefinite a and an definite the 
sentences with indefinite articles a and an will always come before and sentences with the will come afterwards if they are used for the same noun for example aaron bought a baseball bat the baseball bat is green in color i bought a car the car is good so we are talking about car here you are confused whether this will come first or this will come first you have got a or an here the here talking about baseball sentence with a will come first and this will come after it can be the case that this is the first sentence and this is the third sentence it's not necessary that they will come right after one another but this will come before and this will come after time periods and dates okay we often think that 2000 then 2005 and then 2010 you shouldn't blindly rely on dates pt will confuse you it can go either way your sentences can go or your paragraph can go from present to past or it can come from past to present as well you need to use them to get some idea but don't rely on these blindly examples remember this thing any kind of examples will always come after the explanation and this is the golden rule which i have already explained to you so now we what we have done is we have got few rules and we have figured out our independent sentence now what is the next step we have to find the following sentence we have got first sentence now i need to find second third fourth and fifth there is a rule in english that your sentences are always framed this way subject then verb and then object for example rohan is playing in the ground so rohan is subject playing is verb object is ground what is the rule the object in the first sentence will become the subject in the second for example your sentence is the woman built a strong wall here woman is your subject built is your verb and strong wall is your object so built is your verb and then wall is your object anything on which the subject is acting upon so the subject in the first sentence becomes subject in the second but it won't be that simple that yes you are saying the woman built a wall wall is good and then next sentence about something good it won't be that simple but you need to remember this rule that the next sentence will give you more information or details about the previous one let's say i'm talking about wall here next sentence will give more information about wall so whatever information i have been provided will be explained further in the next sentence so the next sentence will always give you more information about previous and the previous sentence will give you more information about this that's how you do it for example the woman built a strong wall it it is singular it was built a year ago with the help of three workers all of them them plural three workers had years of experience they are still working had and still working so that's how you figure out this one wall three workers and they're talking about past here and then present continuous here that's how you do it so that's how you have to solve all your reorders what you need to do is you need to understand the passage plus use all the rules first of all find out the independent sentence and then find the following sentences the next sentence is always going to give you more information about the previous sentence whenever you are confused use the article rule then you need to use acronym rule examples time periods and if you frame a picture of the scenario in your mind 120% you are going to get the right answer in case it is some bit confusing what i'll recommend you is make pairs you don't know what's the first answer first what's the second sentence third sentence select two sentences make a pair which see out of five sentences you will be easily able to figure out that yes these two sentences are going to go together take them place them on the right hand side you only left with three sentences don't look at the pair now look at the three sentences out of those three sentences make another pair what you need to do is you need to select two sentences which will go together now you've got another pair take them on the right hand side or the other side now what you have done is you have secured two points because you have got one pair and another pair you are left with one sentence the leftover sentence will either go in the first place on the top in the middle or at the last it will go at the top if it's an independent sentence it will go in the middle if it is giving you more information about the second sentence and it will go at the last if it is giving you more information about the fourth sentence or if it is concluding the paragraph if you do so if you make pairs 100% you're going to boost your score plus don't waste more than two, don't spend actually don't take more than 2 minutes per reorder paragraph important task but you shouldn't be wasting time because sometimes they are confusing practice 10 every day and you will be fine now let's move on to the next task type of your reading module 
Okay, next task type of your reading module are your reading blanks, drag and drop. Similar to the first task, but over here, you don't have four options for blank. You have a few options, probably double the number of blanks at the bottom. What you need to do is you need to read the passage again, understand the context, use your word. So is MR, was, were, if you can recall, there was a rule, ED form or ING form. So based on grammatical knowledge and your context, you need to solve this. So you need to just drag it from here till here, till here, till here, from here, here, wherever you feel this is right. You'll have a passage on your screen, four to five blanks and around 78 options. Will only contribute towards your reading, not in writing here, only in reading. Focus on context, grammatical rules and eliminate the options. How you need to solve these? You need to read the passage. Read the passage and then read the blanks here. Now, let's say you're not really sure about this, leave it. Fill this one first, fill this one first, this one first. If you have filled three, you have eliminated three options. Now you're left with four options. Based on grammar, eliminate the options. Based on context, eliminate the options and then select the right answer. Fill the ones you're sure first and the ones you're not really sure at the end. What you need to take care of here, do not spend more than two minutes for a passage. Understand the context, use the rules and eliminate the options. Fill the ones you are sure. Do not leave anything unattempted. 20 every day and contribution only in reading. The rules which I have told you earlier, same rules are going to be applied here. You need to practice 20 here and that's how you'll be able to solve. But be very careful with the rules. Rules are very important. I've got other videos where I have, uh, I did live sessions where I solved all the reading blanks. So you can refer to those if you're still finding hard or struggling a bit in this task. But if you follow the rules and understand the context, you'll be fine. Now we'll move on to the last task of our reading module. PT reading task number five, MCQ single answers. Not important, you don't have to spend a lot of time. Similar to MCQ multiple, you'll have a shorter text here, around 80, 90 words. Then you'll have question and you'll only have four options. Only one answer is correct. Read the question, find the information here, and then compare the information with each and every option. Remember, correct option is mostly paraphrased. Do not spend more than one minute per passage. Read the question and highlight the keywords. Locate the keywords, compare and select the answer. One point for correct answer, zero for incorrect, and only contribution in reading, not very important. Now let's solve this and I'll show you how to do it. According to this text, how do excise taxes differ from tariffs? So we need to find the difference between excise taxes and tariffs. Let's see where excise taxes are. Excise taxes are here, where are tariffs? They, they differ from tariffs, easy one. Huh? Sometimes you'll have easy, sometimes you'll have difficult. Excise taxes are governmental levies on spe specific goods produced and consumed inside a country. So these are excise taxes, they, they means excise taxes differ from tariffs, which usually only apply to foreign made goods. Now there's a comma and, and means this is a separate clause. We only need to read here. Means what's the difference between tariffs? Tariffs are only applied to foreign made goods, whereas excise taxes are applied on specific goods produced and consumed inside a country. Excise taxes are levied on all products. No, not on all products products which are produced and consumed inside a country. Incorrect. Excise taxes are levied on specifically identified commodities. Okay. Specific goods. While tariffs apply to all goods, tariffs only apply to foreign made goods. Incorrect. Excise taxes are levied on goods produced and consumed in, consumed in one country, inside a country. That's fine. While tariffs apply to imports. Foreign made goods are basically imports. This can be the right answer, but let's eliminate this as well. Excise tax is levied on goods to which sale tax. There's no information about sale tax, you know, out of the information which we need. So this is incorrect and this is fine. See how they replaced imports with foreign made goods and you've got the right answer. So that is the end of your reading. Reading is important. What you need to practice 2020 reading blanks, reading, writing blanks, and 10 reorders. Don't stress too much about MCQ single and multiple answers. Reading is very, very important because reading is going to boost your reading section itself and your writing section because around 20, 25 points are going from your reading into your writing module. 
and reading writing blanks and reading blanks can be slightly difficult if you don't practice there's no shortcut you need to understand the context follow the grammatical rules eliminate the options and get the ones which are correct and then after that fill the ones which are left what you need to do is you need to make sure you practice every day plus every day revise all the rules are told you if you revise for 5 days everything is going to be super quick and easy for you time management is important i request you please mcq single and multiple even if you mess them up you can still get your score but reading blanks reorders if you mess those up you're going to struggle a bit so you need to make sure you don't spend too much time on mcqs reading blanks reading writing blanks reorders 2 minutes maximum per passage and 1 minute maximum worst case for mcqs if you're not able to solve anything within 2 minutes for reading blanks and reorders and 1 minute in mcq just give your best shot and move on so that will be the end of your reading module now we'll move on to the last module which is your listening all right we are now on to the last module last section of your pt test listening very important a bit tricky but easy module you need to be very smart here you need to play very smart especially with time because you have 12 to 20 questions and you only have 30 to 43 minutes this is the key point if you manage your time you are going to manage your score as well there are eight different types of tasks four of them are very important four of them are not that important we'll start with summarize spoken text and then we'll move on to the rest of them listening is basically divided into two sections section 1 has summarize spoken text and section 2 has got the rest of the questions why two different sections because in here you'll have 10 minutes for each question but after that you'll have an overall time so let's say you have 40 minutes all together and you got one of this so you'll get out of these 40 minutes you'll get 10 minutes for this and then 30 minutes for the re remaining or rest of the questions so you have to make sure you manage your time over here along the way i'll tell you how much time you have to spend because some of the tasks are important some are not so we have to be very careful with each and everything let's start with the first task of your listening module summarize spoken text what happens here you'll get an audio lecture the lecture can be somewhere around 40 to 90 seconds long while the audio is going on you have to take notes and after that you have to type your answer means you have to write a summary of the lecture in 50 to 70 words you'll have 10 minutes to finish this task remember this thing in those 10 minutes the time of the audio is included as well so it's not that you'll get 10 minutes to write that is one thing students confuse themselves so let's say the audio goes on for 2 minutes so you'll only have 8 minutes to write so be very careful this is the timer as i've told you you'll get an audio lecture any interview any conversation which will go for 40 to 90 seconds while the audio is going on you have to take notes as much as you can try to write once the lecture stops you'll not you'll need to write on the summary in 50 to 70 words you'll have 20, 10 minutes not 20 sorry 10 minutes to complete this task and you'll get one or two summarized spoken text in your exam this is very important task very very crucial task because this is going to contribute towards your listening and your writing and a good portion good size good um, points in your listening and writing module that's how your screen is going to look like this says your audio will start in 6 seconds once this finish you have to start writing, write between 50 to 70 words within 10 minutes. This is marked on five different parameters. One summarized spoken text in total is 10 points. You get two points for content, two for form, two for grammar, two for spellings, and two for vocabulary. You need to make sure that you maximize your points here because you'll get points in listening and writing from here. Now I'll explain you each and every parameter. Content again, basically remember this thing, there's no fixed answer for summarized spoken text as well, but keywords are important because computer has got a few keywords, few um, words relevant or related or concerned with the audio. To get full points in your content, you need to make sure you mention the main points again. You need to make sure you mention main point again. Main point is not about writing the accurate idea it's more about the main keywords with the essential supporting points with the other keywords so make sure you include at least five to seven key ideas or keywords from the lecture 
if you write irrelevant content means you're not writing anything from the lecture you're going to get zero in content and zero in content means no further marking you'll get zero on 10. so once you write around seven eight nine ten keywords from the lecture in your answer you will be fine with your content when i say keywords i mean more of nouns then after that your form will be evaluated if you write between 50 to 70 words you're going to get two on two if less than 50 more than 70 means 40 to 50 or 70 to 100 you'll get one on two if you write less than 40 more than 100 zero on two so you need to be very careful you shouldn't be losing a single point here because this is the easiest way to score or boost your points idly write around 65 words grammar if there are no grammatical errors two on two few means one or two grammatical errors means one major one minor one on two more than one major error zero on two be very careful first word has to be capitalized and then after every sentence you have to use full stop in writing summary you have to only write one sentence but in this you can write as many sentences you want next two points are awarded for your spelling no spelling error two on two one spelling error one on two more than one spelling error zero on two vocabulary to boost it you need to make sure you don't repeat the same word again and again avoid short forms contractions and slang language use academic or formal words don't use contractions like don't can't words like like as well instead of like you can write such as so try to make it look as formal as you can so basically your job is around seven eight keywords 65 words no grammar and spelling errors and that's all and no informal language that's all you need to do how to make notes and what other things you need to take care of while taking notes before your audio starts you'll have around five six seconds you'll have around five six seconds and then your 10 second timer 10 minutes timer will start you need to make sure your pen and notepad pad are ready before your lecture starts because you need to take down notes and if this is not working or you don't have it with you after the audio is done you won't be able to replay it and you're going to struggle with time while the audio is going on write down at least six seven broken sentences or group of words if not you can write as many keywords if you find it difficult to write phrases when you have to write you need to make sure you focus more on names dates place things technical terms and quotes means more of nouns don't write the full word try to write short forms and abbreviation so that you can write more if you skip something means the audio is too fast don't try to recall it and move to the next point ignore any kind of mistakes or spelling errors you make while taking notes and be very careful this is one mistake i see a lot of students make they write too much everything is crammed they are not even able to read what they have written it's fine to write two three words less but make sure you write clearly and in an organized manner if not you are going to struggle um, while writing the lecture again not retelling rewriting actually so be careful about this structure of your summarized spoken text will have first sentence introduction then your body then conclusion so basically introduction will have only one sentence body will have two to three sentences and then conclusion one sentence i've got two templates which you can follow the main focus of the lecture was main topic this is an optional statement if you have less keywords you can write a number of advantages or disadvantages or impacts effects causes of the topic were discussed in the lecture the fr first crucial aspect revealed in in the discourse was one idea furthermore another significant point mentioned in the lecture was another idea additionally the lecture also exhibited important information about another idea in conclusion the lecture suggested that or you can follow this as well i'll give you a sample answer so these are my notes or keywords i have taken from the lecture the main focus of the lecture was the increasing population in india the first crucial aspect revealed in the discourse was illiteracy which is the reason behind overpopulation Furthermore, another significant point mentioned in the lecture was the implementation of strict government policies. Additionally, the lecture also exhibited important information about the role of education in schools. In conclusion, the lecture suggested that strict measures must be taken at the earliest. Now, you don't have to be that precise that this has to be the actual conclusion. You can write any phrase, even if it was in the middle of the lecture. Accuracy of the content is not that important, but yes, your keywords are important. Plus, be careful with your spellings as well. Write around 65 words. So write down a few good phrases and you'll be fine. Um, so that is your summarized spoken text. Very important. Take down, take down clear notes. Write as much as you can and then fit it in the template.
important but easy tasks make sure after you have you have ordered 10 minutes right let's say the audio was 2 minutes i recommend in 5 minutes write everything and 2 to 3 minutes to proofread very important you proofread if you don't proofread you're going to struggle big time i want you to have around 7 to 9 keywords 7 8 9 keywords no grammar spelling errors and around 65 words and you'll do your job next task now from here your overall time will start in summarize spoken text you'll have 10 minutes per question let's say you've got two summarized spoken text so you'll get 10 minutes each no rollover time means even if you finish this in seven minutes you won't get extra three minutes in the next task so it's better you use complete 10 minutes after that we'll have our part two and question two starts from here here you'll have an overall time Overall time means you'll have to self-manage your time. You'll have to manage your time by yourself. Very important. MCQ multiple answers. What happens here? Similar to reading MCQ multiple answers, but here you won't have any passage. You'll have an audio instead. The audio can be anywhere between 30 to 90 seconds. You'll have five, six or seven options along with the question. According to the question and the lecture, you need to select the correct options. Probably two or three options will be correct not one because these are multiple answers what you need to take care of what you need to take care of you need to take care of this as soon as you get the um this particular screen or options on your screen you'll have five six seconds before your audio starts in these five six seven seconds read this thing clearly don't read the options this which of the following closely represent the ideas expressed by the speaker you will get some idea that what part of the lecture you need to focus on for example, the question is, which of the following mostly most closely represent the ideas expressed by the speaker about Australia? So you need to, you're clear that yes, you need to focus on Australia in the lecture. Now, while the audio is going on, keep on listening to the audio clearly and keep on skimming the options as well. Don't just go behind the keywords. Don't think that yes, the person said conflict in the lecture and conflict is here. I'll just select this. No. You need to be very careful that you need to understand the meaning. You don't have to go behind the keywords, understand the meaning. Focus on the meaning, not the keywords. Remember this thing, correct options are mostly paraphrased. So don't go behind the keywords, go behind the meaning. Read the question before the audio starts. After the audio, do not spend more than 10 to 20 seconds. If you do so, what will happen? Um, you will run short of time. You'll, you'll be falling short of time for your last questions. And if you miss those, it's very hard to get the score. If you mess up your MCQ multiple answers, that's fine. You can still get your score. This is not an important task. I don't really want you to focus here because you're going to get one or two of these. And this is only going to give you one or two points in your listening audit. So you don't have to worry too much about here. This negative marking, you get one point for each correct option, minus one for each incorrect option, minimum is zero. Let's say you have selected two options. Both are incorrect. You won't get minus two, you'll get zero overall. So negative marking is within the question itself. If you're not sure, I'll always highly recommend only one option. Even if you select one option and that's correct, you can easily get the score. And this task only contributes towards your listening. Again, what is the process? Before the audio starts, read this thing so that you know what part of the lecture you need to focus on. While the audio is going on, keep on skimming these and understand the lecture. Based on your understanding, select one option which you feel is correct and move on. If you are 100% sure about the second option, then only select second because if you select one correct, one incorrect, you'll waste your time, you'll get zero out of this. It's better you select one and move on, you'll save your time and you'll at least get one on two because one option is always easy to look at. That's what you need to focus on, you'll be 100% fine. Next task, you'll get one or two of MCQ multiple answers. I saw you missed it. So one or two of MCQ multiple answers, not important task. PT listening, task three, fill in the blanks, super important and easy task. What happens here? You will have a passage on your screen and an audio will be played for the same passage. But few words are missing in the passage, but they will be there in the audio. So you need to listen to the audio and then a bustling country, let's say, for example. So you need to type country here and then lecturer say loser, loser, X, Y, Z, you need to write X, Y, Z here, X, Y, Z here, X, Y, Z here. Easy task sounds easy, but there are very high chances you mess this up because you're going to make a lot of spelling errors. First, let me tell you a bit about this task and then we'll move on. A transcript of the recording with several blanks will appear on the screen. 
the recording will go on from third, third, for 30 to 60 seconds after listening to the recording you'll have to type the missing word in each cap you'll get two to three questions or tasks um, of exercises from this task each exercise or each question type will have four to five blanks so each passage will have four to five blanks you're going to get two or three of these why this is super important because this is going to give you a lot of points in listening and writing. This task is going to boost your writing big time. You get one point for each correct blank, zero or zero for incorrect answer, and zero is the minimum score. There's no negative marking. Each correct blank means your spelling should be perfect. There's no negative marking, so you should never leave anything unattempted. So let's say there are four blanks here, right? You got everything correct. You are going to get four points in listening and four in writing. You've got three passages. You're good, going to get 12 points in listening, 12 in writing. That is why this is super important and easy. But you need to be very careful with the spellings. Spellings, if there's any blank after full stop, you need to start with a capital alphabet. Any blank after question mark, capital alphabet. Any blank after um, exclamation, capital alphabet. Any proper noun in the blank, capital alphabet. After that, what you need to be careful about, you need to pay attention towards your S and ED at the end. Let's say this, um, the lecturer said countries here and you just wrote country, you're going to lose points as well. All right, before the audio starts, what you need to do? You'll have five, seven seconds, right? Quickly skim through the passage, especially a few words before and after each plan so that you know when the lecturer is on to the plan. After that, Utilize this time to skim the passage and get an overall idea once the recording starts. This is one very common mistake I see a lot of students make is what they do is while the audio is going on and they get the first blank, they take their eyes off the screen and start writing like this. I need you to keep your eyes on the screen and keep, keep your hands moving. Because if you take your eyes off the screen, you lose the flow of the track, a flow of the audio. And then what will happen is Sometimes the speaker will go zap very fast and you'll all of a sudden freak out. You will miss where the lecture is actually and everything is going to go away from you. You need to make sure you keep your eyes on the screen and keep your hands moving. Once the audio stops, have a look at the notes, then type back the answers and move on. All righty. Um, what we are on, don't, yes. Once the recording start starts, keep your eyes on the screen, keep on making notes. Don't just start typing straight away. Once the audio stops and you've got everything, then start typing. While you type in the answer, make sure your spellings are perfect, especially words with S and ED. Display. If you write displays or you write displayed, you're going to get zero. If it was displays, you wrote display, you're going to get zero. All the proper nouns, including name of a particular person, place, organization, has to start with a capital alphabet. If you do so, you are going to get your score. Very important and easy task. You need to make sure you practice around five to seven every day. Very important. You practice five to seven every day. Listening, fill in the blanks. Now we have got, um, yes, one more important, one important thing. After the audio, once you have typed in your answers, once you have typed in the answers in the blanks, don't spend around um, more than 30, 40 seconds while typing and proofreading and move on please we have to be very careful with the time time is going to go zap here pt listening task for highlight correct summary not very important but i'll still give you some idea what happens here similar to mcq multiple answers but over here you'll have lengthier options and four options you'll get an audio lecture which will be some it's it's quite lengthy sometimes around 60 70 seconds long sometimes even 90 seconds long in here, I'll rec in MCQ multiple answers, I never ask you to take notes, but here I'll ask you to take notes. While you take notes, you don't really need to write each and everything down, but you need to write down few keywords so that you can recall the story. story. Before the audio starts, you'll have nine seconds. In those nine seconds, quickly skim through the options so that you have some idea what the lecture is going to be about. For example, we can figure out the lecture is going to be about travel. Then take notes and then compare the information with your in your notes with the options there will be four types of options here remember this thing i'll one option will be true means everything in your notes is there in the option one will be 
true with extra information. Everything in your notes is here, but there's some extra information as well. Something with extra information is incorrect as well. True without the key idea means everything from your notes is here, but it is missing out the main topic. False means something else is there in your notes and something else or contradicting information is here in the passage or option. So that will be incorrect as well. You only know what was told you in the lecture. You don't have any background knowledge. Remember this thing. You'll have four options, paragraphs, um, quite long options. We can refer them to as paragraph 60 words. Audio concerned or related with the options will be played 60 around 60, 70 seconds normally, but can range from 35 to 90 seconds. You need to select one option which best relates to the audio. Now remember this thing, this is highlight correct summary. Summary means the passage which actually summarizes whole of the audio. So you need to select one such option which has got everything or main key ideas from the passage or the audio actually, not the passage. So you need to select such an option which actually summarizes the audio. When we say summary, what we do we mean? A brief of the lecture. I mean, it should cover the main idea plus few of the other ideas as well. There will be one to two questions and this task will contribute in listening and reading. You get one point for correct answer, zero for incorrect, no negative marking. One point for correct, zero for incorrect, no negative marking. And you're going to get points in reading and listening. Not that important, but yes, if you're aiming for eight, you can practice three, four a day. All right. What are the strategies? Skim the option before the audio starts. Understand the message. Take notes, but only keywords. After that, compare your notes and the information in the paragraphs or the options. Eliminate the wrong options. Remember this thing. Correct options are paraphrased. I know 40 seconds are a bit less, but worst case, you have to spend 40 seconds, not more than that. If you get the answer in 40 seconds, which you will, if you follow the rules, otherwise move on. We can't afford to spend too much time here. This is not one of the most important tasks. Remember this thing. Alrighty. Four options I've already explained to you. True, true with extra information without key ID and false. Only this option is correct. We'll now move on to task five, MCQ single answers. Another such question, which I refer to as time wasters, not important, but can waste a lot of time. Similar to MCQ single answers, what's the difference? The audio will be quite short and you'll have four options. What you need to do is before the audio starts, you'll have five, six seconds. The, this thing, read this thing properly. And if you have a chance, just skim these ones as well. What you need to focus on now, the strategies outlined in the book. Now I know before the audio starts that my focus in the lecture should be on the strategy in the book. I need to look for the word strategy or similar word. Because I know this, I'll be able to, there are high chances I'll be able to locate the right information and get the right answer. And then when you get the right answer, select one of the options. Remember this thing, your correct option is mostly paraphrased. So you be very careful about this. Correct options are mostly paraphrased. Read the question before the audio starts. After the audio, I don't want you to spend more than 10 seconds. Worst case, 10 seconds, please. This question is not worth more than 10 seconds. You'll get one to two questions in the exam. There's no negative marking, one point for correct answer, zero for incorrect. Select one option. Even if you're not sure, do not leave unattempted. This only contributes towards your listening. Only 10 seconds. Even if you're not sure, just make a guess and move on. So this is how your screen is going to look like. Read this carefully. Try to figure out the answer, understand the answer, and then select one which best relates to the options or the answer given in the audio. I'll recommend while the audio is going on, once you know, or once you think that you've got the answer for this, try to select it while the audio is going on, because while the audio is going on, you won't be able to move next. So until and unless the audio is not finished, you cannot click next. So while the audio is going on, select the right option. And as soon as the audio stops here, click next and move on. That was your task five, task six, the last task, which is not that important, select missing words. Similar to MCQ single answers, what happens here? You'll get an audio and you'll have four, five, six options. An audio can be about anything. The topic will be always given here. This is very important. I'll tell you why. And the last few words of the topic of the lecture or the audio will be replaced by a beep means they will be missing. What you need to do is you need to understand why, what the lecture is talking about, what is going on, what is the context, and then select one option, which will go according to the context over here.
In this task, you'll hear an audio lecture, 30 to 60 seconds long. Last few words of the audio will be missing or will be replaced by a beep. You'll have three to five options to choose from. Before the audio starts, you'll have seven seconds to skim through the options. Do this, read this in those seven seconds and read as much as of the options you can so that you beforehand only you have some idea what the lecture is going to be about. This task only contributes to listening, no negative marking and one to two questions, no negative marking. You get one point for correct answer, zero for incorrect, no negative marking, and only in listening. Skim the options before the audio starts. Pay attention to the meaning of the lecture. This is the key. No other thing can give you the right answer as accurately as this thing. Understand the lecture. If you do so, you will be able to figure out the answer. When I say understand the lecture, see the context of the lecture. If they're talking positive throughout the lecture, the last few words will be positive as well. If they're talking negative, the last few words will be negative as well. If they're talking positive and then towards the end, they're using some contradictions, means contradictory words, then last few words will be negative. So you need to be very careful. Try to understand the meaning, but be very careful with words which can contradict. However, if they're saying therefore means the context will be same. If they're saying however, but here means it will be an opposite context. Another thing which you can do is, you can note down the last few words. Let's say you have got a few words at the um, end before the beep. Now what you can do is you can compare all the options here. You can put in all the options here and based on grammar as well, you can eliminate the options. I'll show you in a while how to do this. Use the lecture topic and do not ever um, leave this unattempted. For example, your last, this, uh, last few words before the beep were I'm going to, and then be, and then you have got four options, swimming, swim, shopping, play. You know, you'll never say I'm going to swim in. You'll all only say I'm going to swim. So this is grammatically incorrect. I'm going to shop. You'll never say I'm going to shopping. So this is out of the league as well. So two options you have already eliminated. Then what you need to do is understand the context. If your context was about playing, this is the right answer. If your context was about swimming, this is the right answer. But you're not really sure if it was swimming or playing. What you can do is go over here. You have the main topic here. Out of the two options, whichever option is concerned with this particular topic, if it says swimming here. So you just select swim. So if you're not really sure, go with the lecture topic. So out of play and swim, whichever word is related with the S, um, lecture topic, select that one. So that's the last resort. First of all, understand the context, then use the grammar. And worst case, if you're confused between two, select the one which best relates to the lecture topic. Not that important, um, not that difficult. Practice a few before your exam, not very important. Now, second last task of your exam, very easy, very scoring and very important. Extremely easy if you follow it the right way, but please don't underestimate it. PT listening, task seven, highlight incorrect words. You'll have a passage on your screen. An audio will be played for the same passage. An audio will be played for the same passage. Few words in the passage will be different as compared to the audio. For example, instead of past, the speaker will say last. So you just need to select those words or click on the words which are different. Instead of challenging, they might say changing. So words which are different as compared to the audio, you need to highlight them. In this task, you'll hear an audio lecture, 30 to 60 seconds long. Transcript of the same lecture will be available on the screen. Few words in the transcript will be different as compared to the audios. You need to select incorrect or different words. You get one point for each correct selection, but you also get minus one for each incorrect selection. Minimum is zero. If you have selected four options, all are incorrect. You won't get minus four. You'll just get zero. This task, but yes, if you've got one correct, one incorrect, you will get zero. So negative marking is within the task itself, not outside the task. Why this is important? Because you are going to get points in reading and listening. You'll get two to three of these in the exam and on an average, one passage will have four to five incorrect words. This is just an average. You might have seven as well. You can have two as well but generally four to five. Now let's say we have got four and we have got three of these in the exam. You're getting 12 points in your listening and then 12 in your reading as well. 12 points in reading in such an easy task from such an easy task, 
you need to make sure you nail this one. There is no other way around. Before the audio starts, quickly skim the text. Words with similar pronunciation, especially noun adjectives and adverbs, will be different. For example, um, toys and tires. Pronunciation is almost similar, but words will be different. So don't just read. Try to listen actively and read actively as well. Don't worry too much about the articles such as a and the is am are helping verbs. They won't change or replace these. If you're not sure, do not select because there's negative marking. So what I always recommend here is what I personally do whenever I go for the exam, I always keep my eyes on the screen, keep my cursor moving along the lecture and along the lecturer, I try to speak it a bit loud as well, because whenever I'll speak, I will not speak what I'm listening. I'll speak what I'm reading. When I'll speak some other word and the lecture, or I'll hear some other word, I'll instantly come to know. So if you read along the lecture or two, three seconds ahead of the lecture, what you can do is you will be able to figure out words which you are reading differently and the lecturer is speaking differently. That will increase or boost the chances of you getting more incorrect words. And remember this negative marking. If you're not sure, please do not select. Once the audio stops, you don't have much to do. So move on to the next question. Very important. Please, this sounds very easy, but a lot of students do mess this up. So make sure you practice around five, seven every day. Easy task, but high scoring. Please, I request you don't under, underestimate it. Even if you go now and practice on languagecademy.com.au, you are going to face some challenges, I'm sure. So be very careful, please. All right, a few more things. Um, if you have got something, no. So that will be the end of our last question. Please don't spend too much time here, but this is very important. Last question, the king of the exam. If you do this perfect, you are going to get the score. This is the reason I was telling you not to spend too much time on your MCQs and all, because this is super important. Right from dictation, what happens here? You'll get an audio where a sentence will be spoken. The sentence can be anywhere between 8 to 16 words long. You just need to write the sentence exactly as it is. Now, why this is important? Because you get three to four of these. On an average, one sentence is 10 words long. And you get one point. You get one point per word. Now, if you have written 10 correct words here, you're getting 10 points in listening and 10 points in writing as well. Let's see, you've got four dictations, means you're getting 40 points in listening and 40 in writing. Whereas your MCQs were just giving you one point. So you can't afford to miss it. And a lot of students do miss it because of time management issues. That's why I told you not to spend too much time. Let's have a look at the task description. As I've told you, in this task, you'll get an audio with a sentence, eight to 16 words long. You need to type the sentences or the sentence exactly as you hear it. This task will contribute towards your listening and writing. You get one point for each correct word and there's no negative marking. Once you get the audio, after that, please don't spend more than 50 seconds on typing and proofreading. You'll have three to four questions of this type. Before the audio starts, make sure your marker and notepad are ready. What I do is, how, I, how do I take the notes? Because the audio can be fast. I just write down the initials here. For example, the um, audio is, we'll have lunch tomorrow evening with, I'll have my lunch tomorrow evening with my friends. So I'll write, I will have lunch tomorrow evening with my friends. So what I've done is I will have lunch tomorrow evening with my friends. Along with friends, see what I've done is I've just written a small s so that I know if it's singular or plural. After this, what I'll do is I'll quickly write the full words here so that I don't forget anything and then quickly type back. But if you think you don't want to write it, you simply want to type it after the initials, you can do it. But what I'll say is keep on repeating the sentence in your mind so that you don't forget. What I'll do is I'll have tomorrow's lunch or I'll have lunch tomorrow with my friends in the evening, whatever the sentence was. So I'll keep on repeating it so that I don't mess it up and I write as accurate as possible. You need to make sure you keep on repeating the sentence in your mind so that you don't forget any word because I see a lot of students taking down all the initials and then forgetting what the word was. Make sure to get one point per word, you need to make sure your spellings are perfect. If they are saying boys and you're just writing boy, you're not going to get anything. So there should be S or ED if it was there in the audio. There's nothing called boyd. I've just given you an example. 
proper noun and first word you need to make sure you capitalize any name of a person place organization book title religion language you need to capitalize and first word as well you need to capitalize and then at the end you have to have you need to have full stop or if it's a question a question mark that's all you need to do and you will be fine there's no negative marking you need to be careful with the spellings and you need to practice 30 to 35 every day you can practice from a website or you can practice where from from the youtube videos we upload every week at least before your exam cover the weekly predictions we post on youtube that will really boost your score so that is where this is where your exam will end you are done with everything and the next thing is you are going to get your exam report scorecard and i hope using the tricks you get your desired score in the very first go before we wrap up before we summarize everything what i'm going to do is i'm going to explain you quickly explain you the marking criteria just to give you a bit more information then i'm going to tell you what you need to focus on and what's your daily plan let's have a look at that as well all right what i've got is tips and strategies especially the marking criteria remember this thing your pt total score is calc this is going to be a bit complicated uh, excuse me if you don't understand it but i'm trying my best to um, you know help you how to calculate everything pt total score is calculated out of 90 the lowest you can get is 10 so even if you don't attempt anything you'll get 10 means 10 is equivalent to 0 in pt and then maximum is 90 so you play between 10 and 90 so your exam is only 80 points speaking read aloud repeat sentence retail lecture content see i've told you in speaking read aloud repeat sentence and retail lecture you have marked on fluency pronunciation and content so the content part goes into the other module and fluency and pronunciation will go in speaking Speaking, read aloud, repeat sentence, read a lecture, oral fluency and pronunciation will go towards speaking. The score is just an estimate and can change a bit depending on your exam pattern. Some students get more of essays, some students get less essays, so it can vary a bit. So, um, this is according to the current format, but this is according to the format from 16th of November. So, based, probably you need to follow this because this video you'll be watching after 16th of November. If you are, do let me know in the comment section. Personal introduction, you get one question, there's no contribution. Read aloud, you get, should be 60 here. Yeah, it should be 60 here, but marking is fine, don't stress. So read aloud, you're going to get average six questions, and this is going to give you around 28 points in speaking. Repeat sentences, 31 points in speaking. Describe image, 13 points. Read a lecture, six points, and answer short questions, two points. And you're going to make it to 80 plus 10 equivalent to zero, and you are going to get a 90. And speaking is easy to score. Then we have got your summarized written text. We'll give you around eight points in writing. If you get one essay, 10 points in writing. Then see, if you've got two summaries and one essay, you're only getting 18 points in writing. The rest points, the rest of the points are from listening and reading. Reading writing blanks around 17 points, summarize spoken text, listening blanks 12 points, and write from dictation 21 points. These four are very important because these are easy. You can follow the templates here, but not here. So be very careful, please. Reading, very important. Read aloud, you're going to get around 22 points in your reading from your speaking. Summarize written text from your writing, three, four points in your reading. Reading writing blanks 19 points. MCQ multiple one to two points, reading pre order paragraph six points, reading blanks 19 points, MCQ single answer, highlight correct summary and highlight incorrect words. Highlight correct summary and MCQ only one to two points and highlight incorrect words eight points. So, what's important? Read aloud, reading blanks, reading pre order paragraph, reading blanks, and highlight incorrect words. Summarize each context, it's fine, not that important, but MCQ multiple answer. MCQ single answer, highlight correct summary. You don't really need to stress much about here. Don't worry about this. This is the current contribution. But because the format is going to be updated from 16th of November, this is the updated one. And then we have got listening. Repeat sentence from speaking around 20 points. Read a lecture, six points. Answer short questions, two points, two to three points. Summarize spoken text, 14 points. MCQ multiple answer. Highlight correct summary, MCQ single answer, select missing words. 
one point, one point, one point, and one point. Listening, fill in the blanks. Seven points. Highlight incorrect words. Seven points, and the king is going to give you twenty points. Now you probably are thinking that I told you around forty points, right? But the total goes more than ninety, and then you convert it out of eighty or ninety, and then the weightage goes goes down. But again, percentage will be similar. So this will contribute a lot. This will contribute a bit. This is very important. This is very important. This is very important. This is very important. So altogether, eleven tasks they contribute towards your listening, but six are important. Repeat sentence, read a lecture, summarize spoken text, listening, fill in the blanks, highlight incorrect words, and write from dictation. These are not important. That's why I told you. You remember, I told you not to waste too much time here. What you need to do? Focus more on read aloud, repeat sentence for your speaking. Manage time properly in reading and listening. Reading and listening. Don't spend more than Thirty seconds on MCQ single multiple answer for your reading, and more than ten seconds after the audio for your MCQ single multiple select missing words and highlight correct something. So reading thirty seconds, listening only ten seconds, and don't stress. You're going to make it. If I have done it, thousands of students are doing it every day. You can do it. What you need to focus on: read aloud, repeat sentence, a bit on reader lecture. This is super important. Important, super important. Summarize spoken text, listening, fill in the blanks, highlight incorrect words, and write from the question. If you ace these tasks, you are going to hundred percent get your score. What you need to practice every day: twenty read alouds, thirty repeat sentences, twenty reading writing blanks, ten reorders, twenty reading blanks, two summarize spoken text, ten listening blanks, five highlight incorrect words, and thirty write from the questions. If you do these, if you follow this plan for around two weeks. Hundred percent, you're going to boost your score. Plus, after two three days, take a sectional mock test on languageacademy.com.au. You can just go and register there. What you need to do is you can just go there, use your Google Chrome, use your computer. But um, the app is the mobile app is not available at the moment. But we are planning to launch it very soon. So probably by the time you're watching it, probably it is out. It is not out. I'm not really sure. But we're trying to speed up the process. So go over there. You'll get one free sectional mock test for speaking, for writing, for reading and listening, and one full scored mock test as well. So anything you practice, you can practice as many questions. For now, everything's free, and you can take one scored mock test as well. That will give you a crisp picture, clear picture of what are the things you need to work on, where you're missing, and what you need to do in order to improve your score. If you do so, 120%, you are going to get your score. Now I'll give you a quick brief, quick summary of this course. Which will help you to ace your exam in the very first go. Speaking, focus on read aloud, repeat sentence, follow the template in describe image and read a lecture. Focus on clarity. Don't go too fast. Don't go too slow. And practice every day. Summarize written text. As if follow the template. Don't try to use too much of your brain because you'll go, you'll you'll need that in your reading section. Reading more about practice and your grammar knowledge. Memorize or understand the grammatical. Rules: Practice twenty twenty blanks every day. Ten reorders. Don't worry about MCQ single and multiple answer. Listening after sixteenth of November twenty twenty one will be more about time management. Make sure you practice summarize spoken text. Listening fill in the blanks. Highlight incorrect words and write from dictation every day. Plus, one reason why a lot of students don't get their score in listening and writing are because of the spelling mistakes. In listening. Your spelling should be hundred and twenty percent perfect. I request you. I need everything to be hundred and twenty percent perfect. If you do so and don't waste too much time on MCQ single multiple highlight correct summary and select missing words, you are going to get your score hundred and twenty percent. If you do have any doubts, do let me know in the comment section. If the video was helpful, please do like, share, and subscribe, and share it with your friends as well, so that along with you, they get their desired score as well. To practice, go on languageacademy.com.au and crack your exam in the very first go. I am giving my hundred percent to help you guys out. If you think the video was helpful, or if you ever get your desired score watching my videos, do let me know. That is the only reason I work. I make all these videos, share as much knowledge as I can, just to make sure you don't struggle. You get your score within the Time period you have, and you save your money as well. If you need any more help, any advice, anything, do contact us on these numbers. We have got our branches in India, in Australia as well, or you can visit our website and find all the information there. That's it from this video. I hope the video was helpful, and I hope all of you, if you follow this religiously, you are going to get your desired score in the very first attempt. I won't take much of your time now. 
just recap everything and start practicing and do let me know once you get your desired score varun from language academy i'll see you very soon thank you and have a good day if i have done it i've got 95 times till now i'm planning to go for a few more exams thousands of students are doing it you can do it as well don't give up ask for help but do not give up i'll see you very soon